Let's continue our discussion of intrinsic semiconductor. And I've been asked this question about intrinsic semiconductor. I've been asked where is the Fermi level located inside an intrinsic semiconductor. So let me draw the Fermi level inside the intrinsic semiconductor. And I'll use the color yellow. So this dotted line, it represents the Fermi level in an intrinsic semiconductor. And let me give this a subscript I because this is an intrinsic semiconductor. So this EI is the Fermi level inside the intrinsic semiconductor. So now I've been given three options. So the first option is it's located exactly in the middle of this conduction and the valence band. So it's located exactly at the middle of the band gap. The option B is it's located near the middle, but it's more closer to the conduction band. So option B is it's located near the middle of the band gap, but it's slightly closer to the conduction band. Then the third option is that it's located again near the middle, but it's slightly closer to the valence band. So it's located near the middle, but it's slightly, it's, it's more inclined or it's the distance between the valence band is slightly less as compared to the distance between the Fermi level and the conduction band. So now, now let's try, how do we go about answering this? So let's, let's start with something we know, something we derived uh, in the last video. So in the last video, we derived this uh, formula for uh, the number of uh, electrons and holes. So we saw that the number of electrons, it depends upon the effective density of states in the conduction band. And it look, it depends upon how far is my Fermi level how far is my Fermi level from my conduction band? So this number of number of electrons, it depends upon how far is this EI for, or this uh, Fermi level from my conduction band. And this number of holes, it depends upon the effective density of states in my valence band. So it depends upon the effective density of states in the valence band, NV. And it depends upon how far my Fermi level is located how far is separated from the valence band. So we see that the number of electrons, it depends upon this effective density of states in the conduction band and the separation between the Fermi level and the conduction band. Similarly, the number of holes, it depends upon effective density of states in the valence band and the separation between the Fermi energy and my valence band. So now, now the one more piece of information I have, so the one more piece of information I have is this, this is an intrinsic semiconductor. So let's put a subscript I and I and PI. And we can replace this uh, EF by EI, so you know, representing a intrinsic semiconductor. So now I further know that NI and PI are equal because this is an intrinsic semiconductor, so the number of electrons and holes are equal. So I can use these relationships and equate them and now what I'm trying to, I'm interested in, is finding how this, where this EI is located. So let's equate these two equations. So we have, we have, let me choose green again. So we have NC exponential EC minus EI by KT. And this should be equal to, this, this is the number of electrons, and this should be equal to the number of holes. So now we can, what we can do is uh, uh, take a logarithmic, uh, take, a, take a log of this expression. So if we take a log, we get uh, and over here we get EC minus EI by KT. And then we get a log of NC. So we get LN of NC. And similarly over here we get minus EI minus EV by KT plus log of NV. So let's let's collect all the EI terms over here. So I get I get one minus EI from here and plus EI from here. So I get plus two EI. And let me collect all the other terms on the other side. 
So over here I get minus EC and when it comes over here it becomes plus EC and then over here I get minus times minus which is plus so plus EV and this is divided by KT this is also divided by KT and then when I take the log NC on this other side it becomes minus log NC so, I so what I get on this side is natural log of nv divided by nc so now let me further simplify this i'll multiply both sides by kt by 2 so over here what i'll be left with is just ei and over here i'll remove kt and i'll get a two term over here divide by 2 and over here i get kt by 2 so now it, I'm, I'm it looks like you know my intrinsic um, the fermi level in my intrinsic semiconductor it's close to the middle of the band gap it's given by this term and then there's this another term which is you know which is causing the nuisance and causing it to maybe move away from the mid band gap so let's look at this term in a little more detail what does this involve so this involves the ratio of the effective density of states in the conduction and the valence band so we already know this uh, this uh, form individual formula for the uh, effective density of state in the valence and conduction band and we know that they depend upon the density of state mass for holes and electrons and the temperature so if we take a, if we divide these two if we divide these two a lot of the terms will cancel out so you know all these constant term will cancel out from the numerator and denominator then we are going to assume that or actually we're not going to assume we know that our semiconductor is that it's at a given temperature so both the carriers uh, in the conduction band and the valence band they have the same temperature so you have the same temperature so this term cancels out as well so this ratio of this uh, effective density of state between my valence and conduction band it essentially turns out to be the ratio between the density of state mass of hole and electron and this has a power dependence of 3 by 2 so now if i put that in this formula so if i put this in this formula i'll take a log of this as well so if i take a log of this log of nc by nv should be essentially equal to 3 by 2 log of mh by me so i can substitute it over here and let me let me let me scroll down over over this side so what i get is my ei is given by these this term which is causing it to uh, go near the near the mid band gap and plus I have this additional term which is kt by 2 so we had a divide by 2 term over here and then I'll also get a multiplication of that by 3 by 2 so well, I get 3 by 2 into half which is 3 by 4 so 3 kt by 4 and then a natural log of effective mass of whole divided by effective mass of electron so this is this is this is my location of uh, the for the fermi level inside uh, intrinsic uh, semiconductor so now if my electrons and holes they have the same effective mass so if mh is equal to me let's assume there's a hypothetical semiconductor in which the electron and hole have the same effective uh, uh, effective density of state mass so in this in that case my intrinsic uh, uh, intrinsic uh, Fermi energy is going to be located exactly at the mid band gap right so if I have this to be equal the log of 1 is 0 so this term vanishes and my EI is right exact at the mat at the mid uh, band gap but let's look at it for you know the the common uh, semiconductors we use so let's let me look at for two cases let me look it up for silicon and let me look it up for gallium arsenide so 
for silicon, let's look at the values of uh, effective density of state masses for electrons and holes. And then we'll, you know, we'll use, uh, uh, we'll evaluate this term to find out how far away are we from the mid-band gap. And are we going towards the conduction band or are we going towards the valence band? 